gotta be very careful where I step, guys, because I think we finally found them. Oh, this is so exciting. Check that out. Hey guys, welcome back to Shelby on Safari. Today, I'll be discussing five things that you need to know about the amazing amphibian known as the African clawed frog. Then, I'll be sharing some of the differences between frogs and toads because, well, it's Frog Friday. Then at the end, I'll be taking you out with me into the wild as we go out on a hunt for the very common toad. Or are they common? Will I find one? Who knows? So you ready? Join the safari and let's get started. So the first thing that you need to know about the African clawed frog is in fact their genus, which is Xenopus, or a fancy word essentially meaning clawed frogs. So let's find out what that means, shall we? Do they really have claws? Currently, there are 20 different species in the genus Xenopus, which is Greek for strange foot, but they are more commonly known as the clawed frog. Frogs within this genus are both highly aquatic and native to sub-Saharan Africa. However, are they truly clawed? It turns out in the African clawed frog, the most popular one might say of this genus, their front limbs are small with non-webbed fingers. They use this to push food into their mouth, whereas their hind legs are both large and webbed. And in fact, the three inside toes on either of their feet have claws, which are not true claws, but actually cornified tips. The second thing you need to know about the African clawed frog starts when they're wee little tadpoles. Let's take a closer look now at what makes this life stage just so fascinating. So like most frogs, the African clawed frog has three main life stages. First, a fertilized egg, then tadpole, and finally adult frog. Fertilization of the eggs happens externally. When the female lays her eggs in the water, the male will release the sperm over them. And it only takes about three days for tadpoles to hatch, and then begin their life as filter feeders. In the wild, they will eat mostly plankton, Tadpoles have functional lungs and gills, so they will periodically surface to breathe. After about two months, the tadpoles will then undergo metamorphosis, in which the legs sprout out and the tail is lost. It will take about a year, though, for them to grow into reproductive adults. So let's dive right into the third thing you need to know about the African clawed frog. After all, it's all about their aquatic lifestyle. If an African clawed frog was looking for its ideal home on the real estate market, if you will, they would want either a stagnant pool or a quiet stream, and prefer temperatures from 60 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And they actually can live in virtually any amount of water which comes in quite handy because in sub-Saharan Africa, sometimes the ponds decide to dry up and become a bit stagnant. If this is the case, the frogs may decide to estivate in the mud of the dried up ponds. This means they pretty much shut down most of their life processes until it becomes a bit more wet. They can burrow down in the mud and lay dormant for up to a year. They are almost totally aquatic. They'll only decide to move house and take a trip on land to find a new neighborhood to live in if they are forced to do so, say if it's overcrowded or it is just too dry. So the fourth thing that you need to know about the African clawed frog to celebrate Frog Fridays, well, it's rather odd. It involves the connection between the African clawed frog and a pregnancy test? What? Let's find out what Lancelot Hogben, yep, that's his real name, has to say about that. Meet the British scientist Lancelot Hogben. He moved to South Africa in 1927 and did some experiments, to say the least, with the local amphibians. In 1930, he injected Xenopus with extracts from an ox's pituitary gland. 
and, well, found that the frogs started laying eggs. Long story short, he moved back to Britain and brought a colony of Xenopus with him. And there he developed the Hogben test, in which he collected a woman's urine and injected it, fresh and untreated, under the skin of a female Xenopus. Then he waited. If the female was pregnant, between 5 and 12 hours later, the frog would produce a cluster of black and white spheres. And luckily, this process didn't kill frogs, but it couldn't have been pleasant. And this process lasted from the 1940s till the 1960s. And sadly, since this was a reliable method, people all over the world wanted these frogs. After new tests were developed, the frogs were still kept because they became a model organism, if you will, for laboratory research. In fact, they were flown into space and they were one of the very first vertebrate creatures to be cloned. So the fifth thing you need to know about the African clawed frog unfortunately isn't very frog friendly to say the least. It's about their connection to chytrid. The chytrid fungus is one nasty piece of work. It is responsible for the extinction of amphibian species around the world. The frog's skin is very important to help them breathe properly. And sadly, if they do get infected with chytrid, there will be a thickening of their skin, thus preventing them from being able to even breathe. And remember how they were sent all over the world to be used for pregnancy testing and then more into a research model in laboratories? Well, it's this movement of frogs out of their native habitat of sub-Saharan Africa to four different continents around the world could have led to chytrid being spread. Because some may have been released into the wild, whether by pet owners or by hospital staff, and then flourished in the wild, but unfortunately spread chytrid to native frog populations. So what do you think about the African clawed frog? Are they rather cool? Let me know down in the comments below. Now let's discuss the differences between frogs and toads. You ready? Let's hop to it. Yeah, I had to throw a cheesy pun in there somewhere, guys. For the first difference between frogs and toads, I like to think of the ZZ Top classic, legs. Just like the song says, frogs know how to use their legs. They have legs that are longer than their head and their body, which make it excellent for hopping. Whereas toads, well, they have much shorter legs and they prefer to crawl around rather than hop. And just like how in real estate where they say location, 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 the same is true for amphibians. For example, frogs lose moisture a lot more easily, and that way they're not seen too far away from water, which can explain why they look moist. Whereas toads, well, they are much better at coping with dry conditions, and their skin is much more waterproof. Speaking of skin, that is the best way, in my opinion, to tell the difference between toads and frogs. Frogs are sleek and smooth. And frogs, like as mentioned earlier, look wet even when they're out of the water. Whereas toads are definitely more warty looking, they're covered in little lumps and bumps, and they also have virtually dry skin. So guys, what did the frog do when his car broke down? He towed it. Speaking of which, let's go see if we can find any. Here we have it, a common toad. How exciting. See, their skin looks a lot wartier than that of frogs, and it looks rather dry, even though it's wet outside. They have glands in their skin that have powerful toxins. And these toxins are also present in the skin of the tadpoles. It's no surprise we found the common toads at night because this is when they're most active. For they're out hunting invertebrates that include ants, snails, slugs, and spiders. Now even though they are called the common toad, recently there have been declines of them across the UK and they are a protected species but I haven't yet seen the common frog. Oh, 
gotta be very careful where I step, guys, because I think we finally found them. Oh, this is so exciting. Check that out. The common frog is also protected here in the UK, and it's so exciting to see them for myself in the wild. While they do vary in color, you can tell that they're the common frog because they have a dark mask behind their eye, while also mentioning their long back legs that we talked about earlier, but their legs are covered in dark bands. Here, you can see it better now. Aren't they so cool? Now it's time for me to get home, get dry, and give Maui some cuddles. Before I go though, be sure to leave this video a thumbs up before you hop on over to my next video on the mountain chicken frog, which you can see now on screen. I'll see you over there. Have a hoppin' good rest of the day, guys.